Okay, so we're going to introduce you to some basic rules for writing harmonies. And the first thing I want you to do, we're in the blue section of your book, and writing harmonies, it's the back of the first page. There's an omission or a mistake on this page, so just start off by putting a D chord right here. All right, so it's chord symbols. If it's just a letter on its own, it's a major triad, so F major, G major, D major, A major, G major, C major. And then if it's got a little M, that would be minor, okay? If it has a little D-I-M, then that would be diminished, okay? A-U-G for augmented. There's some symbols for those, but we'll stay consistent here. All right, so this was missing, so that'll make more sense. The basic rules, when we write a harmony line to go with this, um, even before we get to the basic rules, you should know what it sounds like, because if you're writing harmonies in a vacuum, you really don't know if they're any good or not. So you need to know what the song is like. Here's this. And when my life's over And when my life's over uh, I, Maybe it's because I'm post-50. You know, this is the kind of lyrics that come to me, right? Okay. So the first thing is we can only use, these are the basic rules, only use notes from the chord, okay? Not using anything else. So you got to be able to spell the chord. So D minor is spelled D, F, and A. Okay. And F major is spelled F, A, and C. So these are the only notes we can use. Okay. Second thing, use the same rhythm or a simpler rhythm than the tune. The basic idea here is that your harmony line is not going to distract from the primacy of the melody. So we're, we're trying to keep it away from anything that would draw overt attention to it. So we're just gonna, for this, write the same rhythms for here, okay? And then it should generally be a smooth line or smoother than the tune itself, and that generally should be below the tune. Again, these are all saying, look, we're gonna write this, but it's gonna support, rather than saying, look at me, look at me, look at me. As you master this kind of thing, then we'll find you can vary it and do other kinds of things like following the contour or picking interesting notes for effects and things, okay? So, um, well, we have a couple choices here. The smoothest line would be F and F because it doesn't change at all. But that would mean that our first note here would be above like that. And maybe that's not so good. If we start on the D below it, like right there, then we're on the same note, but this rises up, so it would be okay. And of course, we could start lower on the A right there, although we couldn't use our ukulele. So let me give you an example. If I were going to go, right, I could stay on the D the whole time right there and go... And when my life's... And then when we get to over, see how D is not part of this chord right here? We have to change notes, otherwise it will sound strange with the chord. So, what are our choices as we go from here? I'm going to write this in so you can see. And when my life's... Like this. By the way, this is a tie. Connects these two notes together. Like that the D from the chord. We get to here, we could jump up to the F, but that's not smooth, right? Like this jumping up to the F would be jumping up two note names. Uh, so D to F is a skip of two steps, but if we go down to the C, then it's just a step away like that. And we'll use the same rhythm right here. Like I said, there are other ways to do this, but these are the basic rules, and they will give you a good sounding line doesn't get in the way. So we go. And when my life's over, right? There you go. And that will sound good with. And when my life's over. Let's see if I can play these together. So we go one.
perfect. It's using only chord notes, right? D, F, A, F, A, C. D is from there. C is from here. It's using the same rhythm. It's generally lower than the, the melody. And it's very smooth because it's on the same note and then steps down like that. Now, we could have done one other note as well and, and sufficed all those things. We could have come down here. You know middle C is right there, right? But if we go down another line below that, that's actually an A. Think about that. C, down a space, B, next line, A. And we could have another harmony line or a different harmony line if we did this. We went, put that ledger line there. So I'm going to make these really low and below. But we could have been on the A, a low A, the whole time, right there. And A is common to both notes, so we could have stayed on the A right there as well. Right? And it would be, and when my life's over, right? And the nice thing is they both work just fine. Depends on what you need. Maybe somebody's got a really low voice or you've got an instrument down there and you want it to be as smooth as possible. Maybe somebody who sings, they can get one note, but you're not sure they're going to change uh, to the other note effectively. So you get them on that one note and you can leave them there, right? Maybe you want the D just because you like that, the way it sounds. So, melody. And when my life's over, harmony number one. And when my life's over. And harmony number two down on the A. And, and when my life's over. And the nice thing is they'll all sound great together. Okay. We're going to do one more right here. We won't worry about this one as an example. We'll do that as a review on another day. But these are the rules. And down here is maybe how you accomplish that listen to and play and sing the tune and the chords, right? So you know what it sounds like. Spell the chords, right? Look for smooth lines of notes that would take you from a note from this chord to that one. Try out different harmony lines. Choose the one that you like best, you know, by following these guidelines. You can always break rules if you know what you're doing uh, for something that sounds better. All right, so this is... Better not bet on a red Corvette in the snow. That's what that is, okay? So, better not bet on a red Corvette in the snow. All right. By the way, not to do anything with harmonies, but just from a writing point of view, notice that when something is slower, you can do more things with the contour, but when stuff is going faster, it's hard to be agile jumping up and down. And so, in this case, I conceived of this one as... A faster line so that stays on one note or just close notes the entire time okay first step listen to play and sing the tune and chords we've got that in your head better not bet on a red corvette in the snow okay next thing spell the chords g major and d major g major is easy g b d yes okay d major is a little more difficult we have to do d f a you have to know that this is minor to begin with, and to make it major, you put a sharp on the F right there. By the way, we have a new symbol here that we haven't talked about in class. They're called key signatures. Basically, and we'll tie this into scales a little more later, but in this piece of music here and in this piece of music here, we knew that we were going to use a lot of B flats. So we put it here and said, whenever you find a B flat, unless we, a B, unless we tell you otherwise, play it as a flat. Here on this piece, it's like whenever you find an F, play it as an F sharp unless we tell you differently. So even though this looks like an F, we have to refer back here and say, oh, yeah, 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 we're sharpening this all. That's F sharp, which is part of the chord. Okay? All right. The smoothest line here is the D. D is common to the GBD chord and the D F sharp A chord right there. And luckily, 
it's below the melody in both cases right there. So the easiest and probably most effective harmony, especially given the speed, is to just play a bunch of Ds right there or sing a bunch of Ds. And it would sound great together if we had a face-to-face -face class. Oh, this is a G, by the way. Another G chord right there. So there are two chords missing. That's a chord. That's a chord right there. All right, we're going to stay there on that. But if we were in face-to-face -face class, I would get you singing one of the harmony lines or the melody lines, and then I'd do the other one. And you'd hear it, and it would be pretty amazing how it lights up. I'm going to use these rests, fill out the measure right there, put the rest right there for that. Okay, so... I can play the D on my uke. Better not bet on a red Corvette in the snow. That's pretty easy, right? So the actual music goes. Better not bet on a red Corvette in the snow. And the harmony line would be on the D. Better not bet on a red Corvette in the snow. Again. Better not bet on a red Corvette in the snow. And they sound great together, right? They sound like... Right? That'd be pretty good. Now, are there other lines we could do? Absolutely. If we wanted to, we could come down to the B right there, like that. And then if we follow this B along, we get to the D chord... Uh, D's not very close. You'd have to skip up a third. F sharp's way out in other directions, but the A is really close, so we could be down there on the A, like that. And we could be like, hmm, hmm, better not bet on a red Corvette in the snow, right? Better not bet on a red Corvette in the snow, right? So it just depends on what you want. Um, could we write something above it? Sure, we could. Could we write something with more contour? Yes. Can we do something that has non-chord tones? Yes, and we'll explore all those things in this term. But to begin with, and these will make exceptionally good harmonies for you, right? Listen and play it. Spell the chords and choose notes from the chord. Try and keep it smooth as the melody or smoother. Try and keep it rhythmically as simple or smoother. Try and you know, different harmony lines out, but look for something that's generally below to begin with. We didn't have to use the same thing. You could do other, like, harmony tropes. Like, you could have gone like, you could have been like, ooh, 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 right? Or ah, or something, right? There's lots of things you could do, not just lyrics. All right, that's a first start. And I hope you're excited because we're now taking all that work that you've done of chords and all that work you've done with notation and we're starting to go we can make our own music or we can take pre-existing music and embellish it with things and, uh, and and make pretty cool stuff okay no assignment from that yet this is you know you did this with me i hope if you haven't go back and try it again and watch the video a couple times until you understand what i'm doing there um, but we will come back again and do more Okay.